I have had suicidal thoughts before, but this time was different because I wasn't emotional, which kind of scared me because I was like, well, may, well, you know, maybe this is gonna happen, you know? I grew up in a Christian home. My dad was a police officer. When I was about nine years old, I went to my first ice hockey game and just fell in love with the sport. And uh, when I was 18, I got an opportunity to play in Canada. When I got to that level, I realized when I looked around that I probably wasn't the most skilled guy on the ice. And I had to kind of figure out a way to stay on the roster. So I started fighting and I ended up having to do that for the rest of my for the rest of my playing career. And I think that's where a lot of my depression and anxiety started. But when I stopped playing, that's when I fell into these really deep, like depression bubbles where you just, you just couldn't get out. It was extremely lonely. So I would try to like, you know, date and like be in like relationships and it just, they would always crumble and then I would be, you know, I just felt like I had nothing to grab onto as I'm falling. What I was doing was I was trying to fill the void with other, you know, like relationships, and, and it wasn't working out. So I got into a really, really dark place. I started getting like suicidal thoughts. I, I have had suicidal thoughts before and I've planned out things, but this time was different because I wasn't emotional. It was very actually like calm and peaceful, which kind of scared me because I was like, well, well, you know, maybe this is gonna happen, you know? The depression, you're, you're in it for so long that you just will do anything to break out of it. And sometimes I think the only thing that you think of that can break you out of it is suicide. This place always was a very peaceful place for me and I just think I wanted to go somewhere that was peaceful. You start thinking about like eternity and you start thinking about heaven and hell and like where am I gonna go and, and that fear of hell and being there for eternity was really like one of the things that just kept me from doing it because I was not willing to gamble my eternity. And I'm just so thankful that I was able to drive out of that parking lot and leave. And God started opening up some doors for me. He started bringing some people in my life to speak some life into me. I ended up going to this church and they started encouraging me to get in the Word, to read. Reading was always very hard for me. I would, you know, lose my train of thought like three or four verses in. I got to the point where I just didn't read because it was frustrating. Somebody told me, well, you know, if you have a hard time reading, why don't you just listen to it? And I was like, well, how do I do that? And they're like, oh, just download this app. It's called Bible.is. I was able to put the Bible app into play and was able to you know, read it and listen to it at the same time. I just loved it. The Bible was just, just coming off the pages. Rising, like the sun. As a kid, um, I was always more of an oral learner. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about this ministry because it's just done so much for me. There's no way that I could have read the Bible. I'm, I'm almost done with my third time. I'm just thankful for this app because it actually gave me an opportunity to learn the Bible in my own way. I'm a big supporter of this ministry. I believe in, in, in just everything that they do as far as international missions, but we can actually use this app ourselves. We can use it when we walk our dog, we can use it when we drive to work, like we can use it in our own lives. It can help us just learn more about who Jesus really was. I wanna read the Bible as many times as God will let me, and I'm gonna do it with this app. One of the biggest joys that I've had is really through giving. I mean, it's such a blessing. I mean, it's actually worship if you think about it. You know, we are, you know, kind of giving back to God what's already His. And so every year, the last few years, I've tried to outgive where I gave the last year. The Lord has just continued to bless my business. Um, he's blessed my home. My experience with Faith Comes By Hearing has been just amazing. The first time I made a donation, you know, they called me and they asked me if I had any prayer requests. And, you know, I was kind of figuring out my walk with Christ and like my prayer life was a little bit like not quite there. They just walked me through a lot of stuff. And I actually went through some tough times. And whenever 
I would get a call from them, you know, I, it was just really like reassuring. God has, you know, kind of restored my life. I mean, he has like restored my life. He's gotten me through the deepest parts of the lows. I just want to be a blessing to others. And I think a lot of time when you do give, it takes the focus off yourself and it puts the focus on others. That feeling you get when you know that you know, you've given to help the word go to another country, go to another place um, that you can't physically take it to, I mean, there's just no better feeling than that.